So this happens. This is a part of a stool. Fuck this game! Fuck this game! Not anymore. Hi, dude, everybody! Welcome back to Chris Review Stuff that you've probably already seen and no longer care about because it's been out for a while already. So this is my review for Revengers to Infinity and Beyond! The spoiler edition. I'm going to start this off by talking about things I kind of talked about in the spoiler-free review and then talk about the spoiler version of the things. The first thing I want to talk about is the nerf characters, starting with the Hulk. So, the Hulk was immediately beaten by Thanos? What? Excuse me? You're telling me the green Power Ranger would go down that easy? I don't know, this felt a little weird. Like, you'd think they would have like a reason for like, oh, we have this machine that counteracts your Hulk powers. I don't know. And yet for some reason, like Captain America later on in the movie was able to hold the gauntlet, like not easy, but you know, he was able to take a hit. Isn't the Hulk supposed to get stronger whenever he gets punched down though? That, that's kind of the thing. Instead, when he got punched, he just kind of stayed down and, and turned back to Mark Ruffalo himself. Then there's also the vision. He just kind of got stabbed by a normal looking spear. I know it's like, it's alien technology, but it's still just kind of a normal looking spear. And it's to the point where I don't even remember what the alien looks like. I just remember alien had spear, alien stab, and every time, like every time the vision got into a fight, he lost each and every time when he was like kind of like the most OP character in Avengers 2 and Civil War. So it's just kind of weird that he just, he just got beat that easy. He was useless. He has, a, he has the Mind Stone. He has one of the most powerful things in the entire universe. So why is he just being beat that easy <laughs> every time? Okay, and I also talked about in the review, I didn't buy Thanos' motive. So Thanos' motive is to wipe out half the universe because he's scared of resources running out. Because that's what happened on his planet and no one would heed his advice to kill half the population and save his planet. Okay, well that would make sense if he were to go to another planet and then, you know, take out half the population why would he care about doing that to the entire universe for why don't just settle for a planet dude go to a planet you serve them if necessary and then just kill half that population and he was doing that to other planets so it's like why does he care so much about the entire universe i guess that's because he thinks he's the good guy but it's still it's like why does he care so much about what other planets are doing in other galaxies and besides that, so if this happened on Earth, Earth has currently 7 billion people. We want to take a stab at how long ago Earth had 3.5 billion people, half of what they have now? Somewhere between 1959 and 1974. Congratulations Thanos, you bought enough time for not even a full lifetime. Which is hilarious to me because that's barely even a lifetime solution. Like it's barely even short term. So really Thanos should really just go to another planet and then deal with the, the whole half the population thing. And like, what happens when the population jumps back up? Does he go collect that Infinity Stones again? It looks like his gauntlet broke at the end of the movie and he got rid of the dwarves' hands and no one else could fix it for him now, I'd imagine. So now what does he do? He just screwed, he screwed himself! Okay, then the third and final thing I'm gonna address at the beginning of this year, then we're gonna go back to the beginning of the movie and make our way through, is the silly battle decision that uh, they made. Um, Black Panther asks for the barrier to be opened up because, oh, a couple of aliens started making their way around! But the thing is, how many of those aliens had to like push through the barrier, they kept dying, so clearly you need a lot to even be able to break through the barrier. And first of all, why does that even work that way in the first place? There's a barrier, so it just be kind of all or nothing? Why could some of them get through but others can't? I guess it's overloading the barrier, but it's like, I don't think that's how that would work. It's just very convenient, I guess. I don't know, it's just kind of a, it's like they have a, they have a problem they can't solve, so it's kind of bullshit the way through. But even still, it's like in movies when like, people are in a castle and they're being attacked, and for whatever reason, they open the gate. It's like, you're in a castle for a reason, man. You have walls, it's defense. Why would you let the enemy through your defense, like, purposely? Unless you have, like, a weird blow them up plan or something. I don't know. Like, even though you open the barrier, what's to stop them from still going around the back anyways? Assuming that is the issue. It's just easier, like, it's much easier to take care of them when only one out, one out of ten gets through and then they shoot them, you know? I'm saying it's stupid. Alright, so now I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the movie. Yeah, so going back to like Hulk being nerfed, he doesn't turn to the Hulk at all after the first scene in the movie. Which once again, the entire like scene on the ship was awesome, I loved it a lot, it was so cool, it was so like... It was nice seeing like the characters banter and all that, but yeah, Hulk doesn't turn to the Hulk at all during the movie, after those first scenes. 
I don't know, it's a little weird. No, he keeps shouting. So Loki and Heimdall die. Loki got choked out and Thor's like, I don't, I think this is really it this time, but I don't know. He didn't really have like a big hurrah death, which I like in movies when they don't give like a character a big, like dramatic slow motion scene and they just kind of kill him off just kind of casually because it kind of really boosts the stakes. And I think that's much more effective in film in my opinion, but I don't know. I don't really buy Marvel and Disney actually doing that. So I'm not going to be surprised if Loki somehow survived or something, but I guess I'll remain to be seen. But I think one character we could all agree is probably dead is Heimdall. His character is kind of dead anyways, doesn't really have anything to do now. He could see anything, but it's like, what, what's there to see now, you know? Speaking of Heimdall, Heimdall, why did he only teleport Hulk to the Earth? He could teleport multiple people at a time, so why not just aim the thing, I forget what it's called, and shoot, you know, Thor, at least Thor back with him, you know? It's like he's gonna die anyways, he might as well get as many of them saved. Why, why have Thor die? Why save Hulk over Thor? I mean, I get it, it's like, oh, these Thor's our people, he has to die with us, the Hulk is not, we must send him back to where he belongs. But it's like, I don't know, they should've, he just should've, I mean, he really just should've saved Thor too. <laughs> So does this mean Korg's dead? The rock guy from Ragnarok? I'm really sad about that. And Valkyrie as well. I miss this in the movie, but from watching other reviews, um, other people have been saying that. Apparently Thanos mentioned he only killed half the population, which fits in with this character, so that sounds about right to me. But I miss that. So we don't see Valkyrie, we don't see her body, we don't see Korg pile of rocks. So did they escape on like another ship or something? But how could we forget it? <laughs> One dude with the knife hands! What happened to him? I must know! So yeah, I'm gonna talk about some of the alien like underlings. Telekinesis guy is awesome. I liked how he's just kind of whoosh and then the car gets cut in half. His his fight with Doctor Strange is really cool. Um, his design was really cool. I like I like the way his face looked. It was all like weirdly like creased in and stuff. He looked actually formidable. And just when he goes in the trailer, it's actually just really effective and like spoopy looking, you know? As for the other aliens, super generic girl alien when only like, you know, Scarlet Witch fought her. Then uh, Black Panther's Royal Guard lady and, you know, the other girls fought her. It's just funny to me that they only specifically have girl characters fight other girl characters. It's fine! Like, I don't have an issue with it. It's just like a funny, like, nitpick thing I noticed. And then there's like the kind of Hulk looking alien with a claw hammer. I liked his weapon, but he was just kind of generic, large, burly, uh, juggernaut-esque alien with a weird hammer thing he throws and it was, it was cool seeing him fight but he was pretty generic looking too and then there's a spear guy I don't even really remember what he looks like he, <laughs> he had a spear that's that's all I got I like the idea of uh, using Wakanda's technology to um, connect the vision so he's not just the Mind Stone because he's you know he's Bruce Banner he's Tony Stark he's Jarvis he's Ultron he's like all these things and you know the Mind Stone obviously together their thought processes if they could use all like the connections to the Mind Stone and kind of reconnect them using Wakanda's technology, he could survive without it. And I thought that was actually a really cool idea and um, yeah, it doesn't end up working out, uh, but I kind of don't think that he's dead. I think he's going to be brought back to be honest. I kind of get the feeling that um, Black Panther's sister, I'm sorry I don't remember her name, might have completed enough of her surgery and saved it somehow so they could just kind of reprogram it back into Vision. Just kind of a little thing though, like that, I, would, I wouldn't I would be surprised if they brought him back, but I'm also not going to be surprised if they don't bring him back, you know? So when Star-Lord receives his distress call and he goes to save Thor, for some reason I didn't see that coming and I feel really stupid about it, it's like, distress call? Where is he going? Is he going to Earth? No, he's saving Thor, you idiot. It kind of reminded me when they like were hitting the bodies and all the bodies floating around. It reminded me a lot of Titanic when the ships go back and all the bodies are floating in the water. I mean, there's not really a comment there, just that's what that scene reminds me of. Anyone else? Also, I really like the scene where Gamora takes down fake Thanos when he uses the reality stone when he gets it from the Collector. We finally get to see Gamora be the fiercest woman in the galaxy, even though I don't kind of buy that because she doesn't really seem all that special, you know? She's kind of like the Black Widow of Star-Lord's crew. So in this scene, Gamora actually mentions she knows something that Thanos would kill for. And I think it might have been revealed that that's, that thing is the map to the Soul Stone, but is that what it actually is? The way it's phrased kind of makes you think that she knows the secret to his defeat or something. I'm kind of curious, you guys think she, she was just talking about the map to the Soul Stone? Or that she was just talking about the defeat? <laughs> so Peter Dinklage built Thanos' gauntlet. So I laughed pretty hard when I saw that, I had a big smile on my face. I don't, is that what? Yeah, it is what I think it is, moment. It's also kind of weird to me that Rocket immediately gives Thor in the scene a new eye. It's like he literally just lost his eye. Like how much time in the series did Thor not have an eye? Probably maybe like 20 minutes of screen time. It's like come on man, Marvel just make a make a somewhat permanent decision with this stuff. 
<laughs> he could go without having an eye. He looked cool without his eye. I wonder if that's his actor, Chris Hemsworth, being like, I don't want to not have an eye. And maybe he like, you know, demanded to have the eye that Rocket just happened to pick up before. <laughs> I don't know. Stormbreaker is pretty cool though. It's pretty much his hammer, obviously. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, but it's different enough, I guess, where it's kind of cool. I keep getting mixed up between calling it Stormbreaker and Stormbringer though. But yeah, I mean, those are both cool names, so. So Red Skull's guarding the Soul Stone. I liked how they made him look like uh, the Grim Reaper a little bit with his uh, floating robe thing. Which is hilarious because the last time we see him in uh, the first Captain America movie, when he gets zipped into space, he was wearing his Nazi Hydra uniform. So it's like, where did he get that change of weird clothes? I mean, he's a ghost Grim Reaper dude, so I guess he has to fit the parts. But where did he find that? I must know. But that's another thing where I was like, is that Red Skull? But I wasn't sure sure or not and it wasn't until I like watched other people talk about it I was like yeah I guess that was him it's kind of funny I had no idea how he got there but if you remember in the first Captain America movie uh, when he has a test rack I guess he goes to use it and it rejects him I guess and it sucks him into space so I guess that's where he ended up so I mean I thought it was maybe the Grim Reaper because I know in the comic books Thanos is in love with the um, embodiment of death the physical embodiment of death so I thought that was what was maybe happening there, but no, it wasn't. Unless he's in love with the Red Skull. Hmm, I would love to see that fan fiction. <laughs> okay, so Thanos uh, loving Gamora. I don't know, his cheers are funny to me. The fact he had to toss Gamora. Tossed! To me, it was just like, come on. I don't buy that he loves her at all. I mean, I don't know. The movie's never kind of convinced me that he really would love Gamora. I kind of, at first when I saw that scene, I thought, ooh, is he going to jump in himself and kill himself? I thought maybe that was going to be the reward, like, that he must sacrifice something he loves. He loves death, so he must, you know, cast death upon himself by jumping in, and maybe the Soul Stone would revive him, and, like, you know, he would be the new master of it. I thought that would have been cool, but now nah, I just like, oh, goodbye, Gamora. So that's the other character I can't imagine. Well, actually... Actually, Gamora is probably alive. Never mind. I was gonna say she's probably not being saved, but okay. Here's my theory on Gamora. I think she is the Soul Stone. Do we see her after Thanos gets the Soul Stone? I don't think so. So I think maybe. I mean, and we see Gamora inside the Soul Stone as a BB. So I'm curious if she's actually the Soul Stone, if she's gonna be able to turn back. Because we know there's gonna be a Guardians of the Galaxy three. Are they really gonna ditch Gamora? I kind of don't think so, to be honest. I don't know. Do you think she's alive? I think she might be. I think for in order for her to come back to life, obviously everyone that dies in the movie will have to be cast out of the Soul Stone, and then she'll like kind of turn into it, I guess, but not in the same way Vision is. Maybe she'll have to like sacrifice the stone and it'll go back to where it came from with Red Skull, and she will, you know, go back to just being Gamora. That'd be cool. And then there's a theory about Doctor Strange saying he would uh, give up. Peter Parker and Tony Stark before he'd ever get the time stone and then he does his weird you know ow that kind of hurt I cracked my neck <laughs> and he sees 14 uh, variations of the realities of which they can beat Thanos and he only finds one and then after that when Thanos is about to kill Tony Stark uh, he gives up the time stone so a uh, many fans are pointing out that this is probably a part of his plan and I agree with that completely that that's why he gave up the time stone um, cause that is the only way and, you know, and the reason why he couldn't explain that to like everyone else is because that would affect the way that they were eventually going to win. So yeah, he gave him the time stone, which I thought was uh, pretty cool because that's, that's, that's clever thinking. Could you imagine sacrificing that knowing you're going to die? Why didn't he do the whole Dormammu thing again? Or he's like, Dormammu, I've come to bargain. He didn't do that this time. And couldn't he have just done that? I mean, it'd be a boring solution since he's already done that, but it's still been kind of cool, I guess. Speaking of that fight, that fight was amazing. And probably my favorite scene in the movie. I love that so much. All the heroes teaming up and using like all their like advantages and powers to work together. That was so cool. Like like Spider-Man casting his wind, you know, and like Doctor Strange turned to a million copies and casting those red things on him. That was really cool. I like that a lot. They almost went too until Peter Quill, Star Lord, learns that Gamora's dead. And he starts punching him in the head, which knocks Mantis out, which gets him out of a stupor, and then he kicks everyone's ass. <sighs> oh, Star-Lord, you idiot. I'm glad you died for you, fool. So I actually got a fake spoiler, and I saw this fake spoiler everywhere, but I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, so I saw this on, like, I got spoiled, I think, 24 hours after this movie came out. I went, I just clicked on Discord, and the chat that I was in last, 
that you know it defaults to that one and just all over the place it said 20 star guys 20 star guys 20 star guys i was like oh my god and then later on like facebook or something i then i saw like that meme thing that was like i love these spoilers on cars and it was like spoiler on a car spoiler on a car spoiler on a car and then tony stark dies and infinity was like god damn it so at that point i was like oh, i don't care anymore and i started like you know not going out of my way to avoid spoilers i guess which is weird because i didn't i think i heard that oh everyone dies in infinity wars like shut up not everyone dies idiot so i didn't take that spoiler seriously and it's not you know it's not a real spoiler because not everybody dies but a large chunk of the heroes die well die but yeah it's funny that i got fake spoilered i got debated <laughs> and you think that maybe enhancing screens like oh i got the wrong spoiler cool the thing i was expecting for didn't happen but i kind of wish i didn't get spoilers so because just going to it not knowing anything that happens that would have been cool so scarlet witch killing vision that was really sad no she really didn't want to do it um, that must suck to be the only one in the universe that could kill your lover that has to end up doing just that. That sucks. It's not like a thing that she just snap her fingers and he dies. No, she had to like, you know, Wah! she had to like do the Harry Potter, Avada Kedavra ending scene with Voldemort and like cast spells, kind of spoils for, anyways, um, where she had to like, you know, charge up her spell or whatever on his head and explode it. And it was all for naught anyways, because uh, Thanos just brings it back and just picks him up and and rips his head off so <laughs> but that was a really sad scene and i definitely felt it in the actors it was really cool and then the saddest scene oh man i know it's a meme though i don't feel so good to meme with peter parker dying that was so sad i actually i didn't cry but i definitely like choked up a little bit because him like he like all, all the heroes everyone was like oh no but he was like I don't want to die and he was like he was so sad about it and i've heard that most of that was actually improvised which is really cool and he was like he was so sorry that like you know he couldn't do better and he couldn't make him proud and i'm just like oh man that's really sad <laughs> yeah the fact he was so horrified was just so heartbreaking when he died all right cool so around uh five minutes of footage was just deleted between like in the middle of the video so i gotta refilm all that and this is from this part on until a little bit later on when i mentioned my camera shut off so, enjoy me trying to rehash what I was talking about earlier. It's funny that Samuel L. Jackson gets his motherfucker at the end, but obviously he turns into dust before that ever happens. But, you know, he's like, motherfucker! And yeah, he's, he's paged uh, Captain Marvel, I guess, which is obviously an end credit scene. It's really funny to me that people still get up and leave at the end of the of these movies. Because, like, of course, like, how do people not know that there's an end credit scene to a freaking Marvel movie? Especially one like this big. But it's like, what, do they not care? Like, do they think it's not going to be a big deal? What happens? Normally, they're jokey scenes, but they're serious scenes sometimes, too. To be honest, I think it would have been a little bit more cool if they did not have an end credit scene at the end of this movie. Just because, you know, as such, like, a darker tone, it would have really kind of added to it if they didn't. If they just have like nothing at the end you know just like complete black and silence i thought that would have been kind of cool to be honest so yeah fury hits a pager i guess which i didn't even know it was a pager for a second i honestly thought that was a weird like bomb detonator or something it looked it looked very like half-assed put together boom you know but um yeah so he calls captain marvel which i guess is maybe frozen on a tube somewhere or maybe she could time travel i don't know i know nothing about captain marvel so I guess we'll find out about her in the next movie and also when her movie comes out early next year maybe late this year i don't know so i have a list of all the people that died in this movie so i'm gonna quickly go over that so loki dies i already talked about how i'm pretty sure like loki i'm pretty sure he'll be brought back i'm like 80 percent sure he's not actually dead for real but we shall see the thing with loki is they didn't really like marvel knows how like crazy like popular he is it's kind of weird they didn't give him like a big death scene they just kind of like Choke to death and done instead of like a you know slow motion death i don't really think that's uh, marvel style so i would not be shocked at all if they brought him back but i'd also not be too surprised if they chose not to bring him back so that's kind of up in the air but i'm leaning more towards like 80 percent actually like somehow surviving or something uh we have heimdall which that's the only one i'm like you know pretty much a hundred percent sure he's dead he could be brought back somehow using some magic bullshit magic but i would not be surprised if he was permanently dead as well we have Gamora, which I talked about earlier in my theory about how she could be the Soul Stone and like maybe after everyone, all the souls that were taken and put in there, maybe she could like boot them out and then she kind of becomes a Soul Stone or she sacrifices, you know, the Soul Stone and goes back to where it initially was and then she comes out alive, I guess. 
I would not be surprised if they did something like that, especially with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 coming out, I would not be shocked at all if that happened. That's kind of the big thing too, it kind of really sucks, like, you know, Spider-Man 2's been announced, Guardians of the Galaxy 3's been announced, oh boy, can't wait to watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3 with only Rocket in it, oh boy, I can't wait to watch Spider-Man 2 with no Spider-Man in it, it's like, obviously they're being brought back to life, it's like, couldn't they wait to announce these movies? Because all we have coming out between Avengers um, Infinity War and Infinity War Part 2 is Ant-Man and the Wasp, which are irrelevant, because they were in this movie, and uh, Captain Marvel. So it's like, neither of those two matter, why couldn't he just announce these movies after that? It just really ruins it. Like, people are obviously going to know they're probably going to be brought back to life anyways, but it's like, why make it this easy? Why make it like, like, I don't understand, like, why would they do that? That's so, that's so bad, I hate it. <laughs> The Vision another one, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Black Panther's sister, like, did enough of the surgery and maybe saved it or something, so she'll be able to, like, save him later. Um, especially because he's, he's such a new addition to the series. Like, he's only been in, what, this is his third movie? So it's almost kind of weird to me that they wouldn't bring him back. So that's another one where I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't bring him back. I think I'm more hopeful for him just because they probably didn't have it. It'd be cool if, like, he was different, though, you know, and he had to, like, learn how to be Vision again. Just because, you know, the Mind Stone... Um, being gone. It'd be kind of cool too if like the Ultron would have a bigger percentage of his brain Maybe like you turned kind of evil and they'd have to get him to be good again I don't know. Uh, the disintegration list includes Black Panther. I'm reading notes by the way, so that's what I'm looking down Black Panther, which by the way, I thought that was kind of funny. I was just off to the side and just kind of turns into dust um, The camera pans as if like maybe like the um, the general of his royal guard is gonna disappear But no, it's him. It's kind of funny. He's just kind of like, you know, he's doing backflips and shit and He just like turns into dust. It's like kind of half-assed as if like Marvel had no idea who's gonna be so big. Um, so I, I almost wonder if they would have shot that differently if they knew this movie was gonna make like a lot of money. Spider Man Disintegrated, which I already talked about, was very sad. Doctor Strange, Bucky, Scarlet Witch, all the Guardians of the Galaxy, but Rocket, Nick Fury, and Maria Hill. Maria Hill, by the way, is a girl from S.H.I.E.L.D. I have no idea who that is. I had to look that up and never seen the show. And yeah, that must really suck for Rocket. All his friends, the only friends he's ever had that didn't look down on them, are all gone. But hey, you'll make some new friends now. The confirmed alive list includes Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Hulk, War Machine, Rocket, Nebula. Obviously everyone's pointing out, it's like, oh, all the original Avengers are alive. Big surprise. With the addition of Rocket and Nebula. Part of me only thinks they kept Nebula alive is simply because um, otherwise Tony Stark would have been stranded on Titan. So I thought that was kind of funny. I mean, Tony Stark could have probably have, like, uh, put together a ship and, um came back, I guess, but it makes more sense for Nebula to be there to help him out, do whatever. Apparently also Nebula has a big part of the story later on anyway, so that's, you know, that's also probably a pretty big reason why they kept her around. And the unknown list includes Black Panther's sister, Ant-Man, Valkyrie, Wong, which is um, Doctor Strange's uh, second in command, uh, Hawkeye, and Captain Marvel. So, I mean, who knows, man? The camera just turned off. I don't know what just happened. I think it maybe hit the 30 minute mark and maybe it just shut off. That was weird. Where was I? Yeah, it's really weird to me that Ant-Man wasn't in this movie at all. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if there's like a reason for that besides like the story reason or if there was like maybe like an actor issue or something. I don't know. I thought that was really weird. I was just kind of ignored. It's like the entire universe is falling apart, dude. I think you should maybe come and help out, you know? <laughs> but yeah, so obviously, really good movie. I don't even know if this is really a review. So much as just kind of talking about what happens in the movie. I mean, I thought it was amazing. It's it's just really unfortunate. We know, like, obviously all these characters that disintegrated are coming back. And it's going to be, you know, very soon. <laughs> well, in a year or so. Not very soon, but soon. But obviously, it's an amazing movie. And hopefully that that you're watching this, you've seen it already. If not, well, geez, you just kinda, we just walk through the movie together somehow. But thank you all very much for watching. Um, I've actually already uploaded my spoiler free, free review and it didn't get a whole lot of uh, interest from people. That's okay, but I'm just kinda, you know, I'm testing the waters with different series on my channel to see maybe what kind of sticks. Um, so maybe I'll do more movie reviews if there's like an interest in it. Maybe I'll try it again and try to be quicker about it this time instead of posting these a week later over a week later, a week and three days later is when I posted my spoiler free, so that's obviously too long. So maybe I'll try this again with another big movie, or just another movie in general, and we'll, maybe we'll see what happens. But uh, thank you all very much for watching, I love you all very much. Um, please leave a like, uh, I have a new Discord, I'll put that link on the screen right now. If you want to help decide on content for me to make, post videos for me to react to, suggest like dares for me to do, that kind of stuff, please join it. Um, you'll also be notified when I post videos there. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I'll talk to you hopefully in a couple days or next week. We'll see when the next video gets updated, uploaded.
and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!